lot of blessings and a uh, lot of challenges for us. Um, this is all for you guys right here. Here is a 2023 recap of our bison ranch here. Come on, girl. Hey guys, welcome back to Cross Timbers Bison. I'm Dusty and we are the Bakers. The rest of the Bakers, they aren't with me right now, but what a year that the Bakers had for 2023. What a year. First real, real year for us with the ups and downs we had. Uh, we had a very interesting summer. A lot of changes took place here at the Ponderosa, really getting it going, building this thing up, building this small bison ranch in Southern Oklahoma up bringing more animals over going through ups and downs and the struggles of the summer what a journey it's been this is all for you guys right here here is a 2023 recap what a year we had a lot of blessings and a uh, lot of challenges for us um, and that comes with the territory when you raise the american bison when you're ranching farming you're always going to have the ups and downs and we had one of those years um, that we will never forget and uh, want to bring it all to you guys right here. 2023 review, looking forward to 2024. Twenty twenty three was a year of surprises. The surprises came early with an early January snow, and the bison didn't mind it at all. It's never easy to leave the ranch, but every January we try to attend the National Bison Association Conference in Denver, Colorado, where it's a National Bison Show and Sell. It's always good to go hang out, socialize, start new relationships, meet some new people, and see some awesome bison. But I can't be away from the ranch for too long. Something new, fun, and exciting was coming to a ranch, and a little girl was going to be surprised. With the idea of possibly using horses to ranch with bison, brought the opportunity to welcome a seven-month-old little buckskin filly, Cora, to the ranch. Cora wasn't the only thing that was new to the ranch. It's hard to tell your little pretty daughter no when there's opportunity to purchase some little chicks. So not only are we raising a horse, we're raising about 30 chickens. The colder months of January and February move fast. Our native prairie hay bales are spread throughout our pastures and cubes are given every other day to our big herds. We'll be doing this process for the next couple of months, all the way into the month of April. Meanwhile, Cora gets adjusted to her new home and meets a bison for the first time. A couple of little calves to hang out with. But then we started a new project on the inside of our barn that was already existing here at the Ponderosa. Hoss gets his last opportunities to sneak in the barn and do a roll around. This was the last bison to ever be inside this portion of the barn. The groundwork started with plumbing and concrete being poured in the northwest corner of our barn. The idea is to hopefully have people here someday that we can share their experiences with our bison. Soil samples were taken on a cold February day for the first time at the Bison Ranch. Soil samples are a great way to see what's going on beneath the top layer. Knowing what our soil looks like will help us in the future and part of our regenerative ag goals. Not only is groundbreaking starting inside the barn, but a new relationship and a bond is slowly starting with our newest addition to the ranch. Not only was this the first horse I had ever owned, I had never trained one either. At the same time she's learning from me, I am learning so much from her. Okay. These were the first steps in having a ranch horse. <laughs> I was ready for the challenge. 
You feeling your oats? Oh, no, nope. wanting to run. Whoa! <laughs> Jeez, girl. I need to thank my good friend Mark for all of his time coming over and spending with me and Cora and trying to teach me and the horse at the same time. As February comes to a close, our mostly dry ponds filled up. So much water <laughs> hits over the spillway, running down the big hole that we filled in here. It's uh, completely running over. Oh, there's a bunch of deer. Construction on the west side of the barn continued the install of the highlight of the west side, the sliding glass doors. I want to thank Sam and Joel for helping us get this done. It's all completely worth it when you can take views in like this. This is one of our favorite times of the year. The sunsets here on the hill are beautiful, a highlight of the Ponderosa. As Cora and I are getting used to each other, we're gaining a lot of ground with the help of Mark. I had a lot of fun learning how to train her. Remember those baby chicks? They're not so baby anymore. It's April, and these guys are getting big. And because it's April, it's spring working time. Twice a year we work our bison. Once in the fall and once in the spring. This is the time that we round up all of the bison. We bring them up towards the front and put them in our heavy-duty corrals. A lot of planning and prep goes into working our bison every year. We put them in here tonight. In where? In the trap. Where Cora is? Or no, the big trap. The big trap. The exposed where the cars are. Why wouldn't you put them in there? We knew that this would be different and that things were about to change pretty soon. With the idea to bring more animals over to the Ponderosa, which included Dunbar. Thoughts and ideas pondered between me and Marissa on how we were going to handle all this between Big Joe and Dunbar and all of our bison. Marissa, you want to come over here and get a picture with him? I don't think you've ever got a picture with him. It was kind of an emotional time to work the bison at Mom and Kevin's place, the Lynch residence, where it all started for us. This was the last time that we knew Dunbar and some of the females that he was with would be worked here for the last time before going to the Ponderosa. All right, you ready? One, two. He did it. No. I was a little concerned with Big Joe's weight. Today, we're also pulling lots of hair samples. Another successful spring working at the original place at Mom and Kevin's and the Ponderosa as well. All animals were taken care of and dewormed for the summer. But shortly after, I was able to be a part of a special occasion. The moving of the bison herd in the national park in my hometown where it all started for me. Where my first contact and relationship with the American bison started. Got the call right before we had our briefing and he said we got them loaded and so you don't want them in these trailers for very long you don't want them in pens very long these animals get stressed out so this day needed to happen and it's been a long time coming there's a lot of history with this herd and it's important that they're focusing on keeping that culture going with these these animals that have been in this park since the 30s Springtime weather in Oklahoma is always unpredictable, much like the traditions of farming and ranching. There's just some things you just cannot control. But the challenges that are coming over the next couple of months are some of the challenges we never faced before or saw coming. With some changes in her career, Marissa was able to come home and work on the ranch after working a job an hour and a half away from me and Brooks. Let's just say <laughs> it started off Kind of rough. After getting the bison worked in April, it was time to get some work done around the ranch. When you're trying to build a ranch from the bottom up, there's always brush to clear and new fence to build 
especially for raising bison. As the work resumes around the ranch, one of the most exciting times of the year is red dog season, which comes in May. The first two red dogs were born a couple days apart at the Ponderosa to start off the red dog season of 2023. Texas Cow 11 and 54, AKA the Jumper, were the first two to have calves. Marissa and I also attended the state FFA convention in Tulsa for the first time and set up a booth. We enjoyed being around the kids and it was the first time for me to be back at the FFA convention without wearing the blue jacket. All the work was really about to happen whenever we did some monumental things this summer. And one of those things was bring Dunbar to the Ponderosa. Now the work really begins. Along with Dunbar came the four quapaw cows as well. With all the excitement going around, there was one particular bull that wasn't entirely happy with everything going on. We gotta get Dunbar out of there. Once everything settled down with the two big guys, we were able to let Dunbar acclimate to his new habitat, his new environment at the Ponderosa, and eventually place him into the hoss herd with the 20 young two-year-old breedable females that was made up from our South Dakota heifers and our wolverine bison from Canada. You could say Haas and Dunbar got along real well from the beginning. They hashed it out, bull to bull. They're going to have to get it out of their system. You just hope nobody gets hurt. Looks like Haas is just having fun. Dunbar's just holding his ground. The next big excitement around the Ponderosa was to let the bison on the burn unit for the first time. A lot of fence building, a lot of preparation to get this done. And with the awesome help from Cole Fagan and Ethan McJames, who helped put the fire on, came back out and we wanted them to be a part of this releasing the bison into the burn unit for the first time. But unfortunately, things happen. And something bad happened this time. The hoss herd unfortunately found a gap in the fence where a creek crossing was, and made their run for an escape. Open up our gate! They're coming down Chickasaw Trail! They're heading their way. Oh. Walking them your way, Dusty! Oh, you knuckleheads. Go back to your home. Don't put any pressure on them. Let them go. Let them go. Let, Let them go. Decide. Luckily and safely, we were able to devise a plan and get the bison back in. But the excitement continued. One of the last bison we needed to bring over from the original place was our favorite, and most unique of them all, was Eleanor. Eleanor got to come to the Ponderosa. We were happy to have more red dogs being born. The month of May was nothing short of exciting and crazy. But June and July had more in store for us as well. It took a little longer than expected. The hooves were sticking out. Come on, mama. Come on, one good push. And I'm sitting here getting worried. I just saw this calf born dead. <sighs> Dang it. She had a daughter, so uh, in 20, and she just had a calf, basically. Oh my gosh, Peaches, Peaches is having a calf. Holy crap, Peaches is having a calf. To one of the most saddest times of being a bison rancher and facing 
unfortunate circumstances and things you just can't control. But then something remarkable happens. As one is lost, another is born. And for the first time ever, I got to see a live birth from a bison. Sorry, Mama. As a newborn thrives and gets milk from its mother, I had to go and bury another. But the challenges kept coming. Dunbar was having a hard time adjusting to his new place and Big Joe being his neighbor. While I was at a conference speaking in Canada, Dunbar and Big Joe ended up in the same pasture. Mom and Kevin caught it on camera. Dunbar came out on the losing end and walked away with a limp and was hurt for the next two weeks, but eventually got better and was ready for breeding season and to be back in his herd with all the females and Mr. Haas. Hope you're doing okay, man. As things were heating up and our hands were full, we tried some new techniques to handle the flies that come every summer. We covered some ground on the barn and started building a new fence for the only pasture that has never had bison on it before. This was an exciting moment for us to move the bison to this pasture, the hay meadow. Since Kevin and Keith went ahead and built the fence and stretched all the wire, all there was left was to hang a gate and this fence would be done. The only thing left to do was haul some freestanding panels over to this hay meadow and a water tank. Another exciting time for Marissa and I and another goal achieved it was to get the bison on a pasture they'd never been before. This was the only pasture that none of the bison had ever been on. But then August came around and this was the most uncomfortable thing we had done at this point. All right, we still have our issue. Um, it's gonna be the first time we've dealt with this type of issue. A tough moment for us at the Cross Timbers Bison Ranch, but we were able to save the cow and on to more work. It was hay season and it was time to gather all of our hay for the winter. Walk, walk, bring it this way. Okay, why didn't you step back? <laughs> we also took hay samples for the first time this year and really wanted to find out how much protein was in our native hay, which we eventually got tested with our extension office. Even though it was a very hot and dry summer, a late downpour of six inches of rain in a couple of hours caused a large flood along our creek, damaging the creek crossing in the burn unit. Not knowing for sure what happened, if he was jabbed with a horn, a stick, or anything, Dunbar, while in the hay meadow, his eye did become injured, and we had to vaccinate him. This, this eye is all good. Even though the summer that we had wasn't going as well as we had planned, Mark brought some horses over and we took Cora out of the pasture for the first time. It was a nice little break for Marissa and I to ride horses around the Ponderosa. Because there's no water on the back side of the property, we wanted to try to drill a well. And so we did. And we missed, unfortunately. At 160 feet in one drill, no water. And then 100 foot in another place, still no water. 
things did not seem to get easier for us. We sold our first breeding bull, which was an offspring of Eleanor and Dunbar. We were excited to see them go all the way to Indiana to some new bison producers. Charlie had kittens. And then somehow an unfortunate circumstance happened and Cora got injured. A trip to the vet and the patches sewn up. Cora was in recovery mode. And we were doing hydrotherapy every day. Not his baby, but... No, it's not. Uh-uh. No. More tragedy struck at the Ponderosa when a first-time mama had her calf in the hay meadow. With a combination of summertime heat and a lack of gaining colostrum from mother, even though we tried to rescue this red dog, we came up shorthanded. Another red dog to bury beneath the oak trees. Marissa and I were also given an opportunity to go to visit the Redmond Minerals salt mine out in Redmond, Utah, where we met a bunch of other influencers and got some behind the scenes information and knowledge and education from the Redmond Minerals people. Great products, great people. We had a great trip. And we even got to lick some salt off the walls. Oof. Construction continued with the west portion of our barn, here laying out the septic lines along with the inspector, Cora. In the month of September, we were also able to do something for the first time. We planted cover crops in pasture too. Ooh, kitty, 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 kitty. Kitty, kitty. Yeah? Yeah. You missed him again. Are you? Got her. Good job. See, it just scares him. For As the summer heat started to go away and fall started to show its face, we had a late bloomer born at the ranch. A fine young heifer from the 32 cow. Also in October was the first time we revealed another new addition to the Ponderosa, the 78 International Scout. And before we know it, it's working time again. A lot of preparation and time put in to gathering up the animals. And this time, we did the roundup Mark a little bit different. We brought Mark and, right where and the horses in. The high line is, I would, is in a, there's a dry pond right there. Mm -hmm. Go under the high line and hide back. And he doesn't care. And there's two, like I said, there's two calves. I, <coughs> I forgot to bring that up. The old ways is count the cows. Come on, let's go. Come on. There's some stragglers in the back. Come on, kids. What a fun and exciting day that we had doing all this together. Thank all my friends who came and wanted to be a part of this special and cool event. And it worked. We rounded up all the bison, safe and sound. Round up at the Ponderosa again, went a little bit different this year. And the big boys got to go face to face again for just a little bit. But this time, not during breeding season. Big Joe and Dunbar got along. Once we got this herd rounded up, it was time to go to Mom and Kevin's at the OG and get those animals taken care of over there. Hey, I got your earrings, Tom. You got them all? Alright. Alright, we're on the way. Okay, okay. <laughs>
All right, we'll see Kevin you the later. catcher. At least they're only yearlings too. Yes. It's not like we were working what we normally do. No, it's less stress. On the same day of working at the OG, Marissa and I celebrated our fifth anniversary of being married. But now it's time to work the biggest herd that we have at the Ponderosa. With the late start using Doc system, we were pushed. We were pushed into working the bison in the dark and had to cut it off early. I need to catch these bison in that pen. Their ears caught. Yeah. Thank you, After the fall working and Christmas time slowly approaching, got it? and Christmas time fastly approaching, Marissa and I filled the orders and got them out just in time. This barn is going to be awesome. We're getting closer and closer for it to be done. And can't wait to see the final product. 2023 was a lot of ups and downs, a lot of learning, some sadness, and some happiness. But we're thankful for it all. So lucky to be able to raise an animal that once almost disappeared from our land. And now we have the opportunity to help that and help bring back the American bison. And we're only able to do that with all the people that are involved. From Marissa and I, we just want to give a special thanks to all of our friends that are always part of the workings, the fence building, the dusty shenanigans, and anything in between. I want to thank our friends and our family for all the help and the support that we get from them. Maybe should have thought about I also want to give a special thanks to my wife for being the behind-the-scenes motivator, inspiration, and loving support that's always been there to care for these animals. She's put a lot of her love, heart, time, money, and energy in support of this passion of mine. I hope we can continue to keep raising the American bison in a conservation way and taking care of the land and hopefully leave a legacy behind for others to do the same. Thank you for following us along. Thank you 2023. Looking forward to 2024. Here we go.